I will be giving away this racket, by the way. Just make sure you guys follow the details in the Instagram post below. The link will be the first link in the description. So if you want this racket, we will be giving it away. So just pay attention to the Instagram post. So in my hands, I have a Nanoflare 800 Pro uh, for you G5. There are unfortunately no G G6s that I know of in the Philippines. Um, this was a review loan unit given to me by Rally Sports PH. Check them out here. They're pretty solid um, retailer here in the Philippines. Uh, they retail to Metro Manila, maybe elsewhere, but as far as you know, all of Metro Manila. And the string was done by JKO, and here's him. He does some stringing for the national team as well. This was strung at Export 65, 28 pounds, 10% pre-stretch. Um, so special thanks for both of them. Without them, this wouldn't have been made possible. I have my notes over here because I have a lot to say about this racket. Um, it was a tricky racket to review, not gonna lie. I was given a week to play with this, right? And I wanted to put it through as many situations as possible just to try and give you guys a very complete understanding of what it is because I think, you know, a week still is not enough time to really understand a racket, especially one that is as complex as this one, to be honest, but I digress. So let's talk about it um, in the perspective of someone that switched over from the 100ZZ to the 1000Z and uses the 1000Z um, pretty much exclusively. So before we get into the specs and my experience, as you guys know, I like to give a lot of context because I think understanding where the individual reviewer is uh, mentally and like where they are in badminton will help you understand the kind of opinions that they form when they are reviewing rackets, right? I have my notes here, so if I look off camera, it's because I'm reviewing those, so just bear with me. Um, if you don't really care about the context, just wanna see like what I think in the specs, just use the timestamps below and you guys can f f feel free to skip ahead. So this was a hard racket to review, right? So typically, whenever I get a new racket that, that I want to make a video about, I usually have an opinion, a very clear opinion that doesn't change within like the first 10, 15 minutes of hitting with the racket. The 800 Pro was not the case, right? So like with, for example, with the 1000Z, like my first session, even just like warming up, just playing drives, I like understood immediately it was going to be like, wow, this thing is fast. The repulsion is exhilarating to play with. Like this feels like my racket. It feels like a doubles racket. All my shots just have pace, pace, pace. And so like the entire time reviewing it was just understanding that this was a speed demon, like a performance, like oversteering car, if you will, like, like CKU has described and I've used that example before. So the entire time I used it before I made the video was just kind of like finding situations about like when is this, when when is this repulsion good? When is this bad? Like, do I like the repulsion, right? How does the repulsion do like in half smashes and full smashes, drops, right? Um, so with 800 Pro, it was not like that, right? And by the time you guys see this, like I've said, I've spent probably around 30 hours on court with it, and I still don't feel like it's enough time. But like, I, like the show must go on, right? So. I get some comfort from understanding that like some other reviewers, again CKU, um, struggled to review this. He in fact got a 4UG5 and you can watch his video and he talks about how he got a 3UG5 requested as well just to get a more complete understanding of this racket. When you change weight classes like that, it really just mess with like the characteristics and you're not, you're not really giving an apples to apples comparison because that's, that's, because that's another variable you're changing, right? Like everyone is already using different strings and everyone's using different grip sizes and like changing weight classes. Like sure, it might be three to five grams only, but like it can completely change how one feels about racket. Like CKU f like loves a three U, but doesn't like the four U at all. Um, I stuck with the four U just because I wanted to give an apples to apples comparison. If I really didn't like it in four U, then I want to be able to say that like, you know, I tried my best and like, just just it, it isn't cut out for me like it, i don't i don't want to be able i don't want to say like oh yeah this is a good racket but only if you get three you like it's for me it's either it's good and for you or it's bad and for you like that's it so as you guys know um i've sw I switched over to the 1000z right and these two are probably really similar because again they're both high-end they're both fairly recent nano flare releases and i feel like i'm in a unique position to ask the question that it's hopefully on everyone's mind, which is what's the difference between this, the 1000Z, and this, 800 Pro, right? And which one should you get? Before I answer that though, let's walk around the racket, right? So let's take off the cover, right? Which is your typical cover. 
and on the back it has like all of the different you know like specs like it talks about how this is a frame dedicated to drives which we can talk about um looking around the racket this is a fairly wide racket i thought this was a little thinner than the 1000z but like when actually comparing them side by side like visually they're both about the same width i watched some other reviewers because i don't care to measure to the exact millimeter but from what i gathered the 800 pro is basically like physically same width and same shaft thickness as the nano flare 700 if you guys remember that and then the differences are like you know in the t shaft um in in, in the string pattern that kind of thing so you can just imagine it's like a nano flare 800 with modern tech in a 700 body it's a it's it's a bit of a confusing build the main things that i want to pay attention to guys is that like there's an apparently inclusion of copper near the bottom of the racket which is interesting because one copper is a metal so in comparison to like carbon which is usually what you know or graphite which is usually what rackets are made out of these days it's quite stiff but copper is a relatively soft metal so this is supposed to give you like a rigid feeling or just add rigidity to the frame when driving and then um, the different stringing patterns so you really can't tell until you play with it or if you wanted to count whoops that was my 1000z don't worry this is safe <laughs> um this is apparently a 22 by 22 meaning that there are 22 crosses or sorry mains and then there are 22 crosses so typically the stringing pattern which uh, correct me if i'm wrong is a 22 by 21 so the extra cross basically reduces what they're calling the interval. So basically the spacing between each individual string, which makes a tighter pattern, which apparently helps with repulsion and that kind of thing. Um, I don't really know if that's the case. I, that's not really what I felt. I just felt a really dull and mute feeling on the string. Like it is not fun to play with this track in the beginning. Um, even now, like, I really don't prefer, I really don't like the hitting feel on this. Even now, I've gotten used to it. I think I've gotten close to figuring it out and being able to like use um like the like the potential in it like i just i'm not a fan of this like at all um and but one thing i do like is like i think the tension holds way better i'm not sure why but like this is 28 right and it's been a week i've pretty much used this racket like exclusively unless i've been playing like some serious games i actually need to try and then i'll switch over to 1000z but like it's like it still sounds fairly new, like it still feels fairly tight, so maybe that's a plus. So this having copper, I want to revisit the copper, is interesting because it makes it feel stiffer than it should be. And combined with it being already like a headlight racket and it's stiff, it's just really hard to get a good um, timing. Like to learn the power timing on this is very hard. Like I really have to intentionally like follow through with like even my fingers, right? Because like I'm a bit more of a power player, I just like, I like to hit hard right and like just using like you know just like your hips and shoulder isn't enough you really have to like pronate and use your fingers as well to kind of effectively transfer the power i've noticed into basically every shot so even like when i do play a good shot like in terms of timing and technique and like i was loose and i tend to stop right like all the basics of a proper shot right the hitting feeling just does not give you any confidence you played a good shot because it's so mute right it just like that's the correct word there is no dull maybe but like it's just so mute like you hit it and like there's not a good ping right it doesn't feel good in the hands like these things you think they don't matter but when you're like playing and you're so used to having good feedback to um let you judge the quality of a shot it like really throws you off your game and um it made me i think subconsciously change how i play because like typically with a thousand z um i would just play everything down right like fast drops half smashes stick smashes like even full smashes like drives if it was flat like i would just always be on the offense because i know i could rely on the repulsion that the 1000z gives you to just keep the pressure on so with this i found i was playing a lot of softer shots i was um playing more neutral playing more like building the the rallies longer i um would play attack clears as well um and kind of just rely on moving the opponents around counter attacking that kind of thing which is kind of what this racket was designed for but i don't really like playing like that so um I, this is why also it's hard to review this racket because like i don't know if some of this 
is because I just don't like this racket or it's because like it just doesn't go with my playing style. So that's like another thing you guys have to pay attention to when I am giving you my opinion about this racket. So of course, the paint job is pretty. Um, you know, everyone, all the reviewers I see always freak out when Yonex makes a matte painted racket. I mean, like it looks fine. It kind of looks like, like a muted version of that turquoise Nano Flare 700 racket to me. Um, and there's supposed to be like exposed bits of carbon to like signify like it's fast or whatever but I really don't care um, for me personally the yellow and black on the Nano Flare 1000Z has grown on me just because like it's an iconic color like you can see it from a mile away like I like want people to know like hey I'm using this racket right this is like a stealth racket like you pull this out from a far away it just looks like like a black like very unmarked racket like if you want to have like a stealth racket I think this is pretty much the most low-key racket that Yonix makes in the current lineup, right? Arc Saber 11 Pro is a little low-key as well, but it's like red, right? This is this blends. This is really from far away it just starts to look like black. So I guess if that's what you're looking for, you have that. So now that we've like walked around the racket, I think the last thing I'd want to talk about is the handle. Not really the length of the handle, because like, you know, it's a little bit shorter than the 1000Z if you really care about that. I find it interesting that like the, the cone doesn't have the EB cap plus, so like that indented ridge. It just has regular EB cap, which I mean, I cover mine up with overgrab anyways, so it doesn't really matter. So let's actually talk about my experience and what I presume will be probably the longest section of this review. So I will break this section up into subsections as well if you wanna care about how I feel in specific scenarios, right? So I'll just talk about my first two hours with the racket because like your first impression really is what will set how you frame the rest of your review, I think. So the first two hours were absolutely horrible. I was mishitting everywhere. Um, like the timing was off, of course, because every racket has different timing when it comes to swing and power. So of course you're getting used to that. But also because, like I said earlier, that the string bed feels so dull and mute, I couldn't get like good feedback on like if I'm hitting it correctly or not, right? So it was that also didn't make adjusting to the racket any easier. Um, just the com combination of like stiff and light-headed, or sorry, head light, just makes it hard. And I just think like if I wasn't using the 1000Z, which is already quite similar to this, like for example, if I was using the 100ZZ, which has an amazing hitting feel because of the solid core and because of the compact head and is head heavy. Like imagine switching from head heavy, compact, and like, you know, a solid core to this. Like I think my review would be a lot more harsh about it, but because I'm switching over to something at least within the same family, it isn't as bad, so keep that in mind as well. Where it's supposed to shine, right? It's supposed to shine in counter drives. It's supposed to give us, you know, what it was the back of this thing say, consistent high velocity drives with repulsion and maneuverability. Um, you could say that, right? Um, it definitely produces well. Um, it's just like that, that muted feeling just doesn't really give me confidence in, in driving, right? Like, sure, you can play flat and I can play flat. Um, but like I still would prefer the 1000Z, right? Uh, when it comes to smashes, it's probably smashes and drops are probably like the areas where I feel this lacks the most. Just because like the headlight nature combined with the muted feel, this really does not give you like good confidence in where your racket is in like this three-dimensional space when it comes to like hitting a shuttlecock, right? So like my earlier footage and I'll try and find some clips of it like I'm completely missing the shuttle The power production is just not there like sometimes I'm hitting it, but the sound is off I'm like, you know, just hitting it incorrectly just missing the sweet spot. It's just a disaster um, Drops are kind of the same way sometimes they'd be too tight sometimes they'd be too loose sometimes they'd be too fast like I just really couldn't get a, a dial in on Like where I wanted the drop to go, right? So that's what I think about drops. An area where I did find I enjoyed a lot better is actually the attack clears and then like the half smashes, right? So I think it's because you have to generate a faster swing with this racket in particular to produce either of those shots. I think they were more effective. And the reasoning I have is because you have a faster swing, you look a, lot, a little bit more threatening 
but because like it's headlight it's not producing as much power you can swing faster and the attack clear will still stay in right so i love playing this shot particularly in mixed doubles because like my swing looks really fast but then you know it's still like landing just inside the back line um i think the half smash i was doing just because like for me to play a full smash on this like you really have to be like positioned well like you have to be timed well you can't really just rely on your arm you've really got to like commit mentally physically to produce a good shot at least for me at my current skill level so i think i preferred just stick smashing and just using like my forearm and wrist to play a lot of angle because like this does well in that as well so when it comes to counter attacks and drives and, and blocking and that kind of thing i think this is an area where i actually prefer this over the 1000z um, simply because it does have less repulsion than the 1000Z I find. So I find that when I'm doing like smashing blocks or um, counter drives, that kind of thing. On the 1000Z, sometimes the extra repulsion does get in the way. Especially if they play like a really fast drive and you're not really prepared for it. You really kind of have to like cut the shuttle or take it at an angle and try to reduce the repulsion by like an, like an off-center hit. Um, with the 1000Z just because if you hit it straight, it's just gonna go like really far in the court It's hard to play those tighter soft shots, right? Um, and that's really hard to do especially when you're under pressure and you're playing against people that challenge you, right? So the 800 Pro I find that's really not the the case i find that like the amount of repulsion here isn't just enough to get it over the net um if i decide to play very passively if i decide to push it and play long blocks i have to use a little bit of my more of my fingers short but it's easier to add repulsion than it is to take away so in this situation i'm okay with that i find that the muted feeling helps with um tight net shots especially more single type spinning net shots again the extra repulsion from the 1000z can, can kind of get out of the way in there if your technique isn't pinpoint perfect and you're not using fresh strings the the net can be a bit bouncy still just because of the repulsive nature of the racket uh, of the 1000z i mean um for this the you know again the same reasons like the copper it being not as repulsive it being a bit more stiff feeling helps you really nail those tight spinning net shots Another surprising area I prefer this over the 1000Z is in the service situation. I think again the same reason. So it's, I'm just going to be a parrot here, right? Less repulsion, just more stiff feelingness if that's an accurate way to describe things. Um, just it being rigid and mute really helps me nail like tight nets. Like I already, I already think I have a pretty decent net or not decent net, a decent serve. But I think from here, like, I'm able to get those, like, serves that, like, for example, if this is, like, the net, like, to get those serves that kind of just, like, really skim and go inside the inner T, like, more consistently with this than with the 1000Z. And again, it's just because it's a bit easier to play softer shots with this, with this racket. So, when it comes to, like, power shots, um, I'll revisit, like, the smash, just because, like, you can produce some solid smashes out of this, but the thing is, it's so much harder for me to produce a solid smash from this compared to the 1000Z. And then the the reward is not even that much better. I would say this is probably slightly worse um, power-wise and just like from me producing smashes, I prefer the, the, the ones I'm able to consistently produce in the 1000Z. So like, like my best smashes are still better on the 1000Z and my consistency on like even just my okay um, smashes are still better on the 1000Z. So it's like straight winner for the 1000Z. So verdict, right? What is this racket for? And that is probably the hardest thing to answer because like a lot of the rackets you review or for me a well-designed racket, let's, let's say that. A well-designed racket is one that has a clear racket identity. It's one that you pick up and you can understand who it's for and like why it was made, right? So like, let's look at the rackets I've, I've reviewed in the past, right? Um, 88D Pro, rear doubles, right? 88S Pro, front doubles. And even if like, you don't pay attention to the marketing and you just take the rackets as is, right? Like 88S Pro had a shorter overall length, so it's easier to maneuver in the front. It had a very unique stringing pattern, right? 
um, designed for shuttle hold over repulsion, right? All desirable things for someone that wants to lock down the front, right? 88D Pro. Um, I don't remember the actual specs, but like, right? It was longer by five millimeters, right? It had repulsion, it, it was aerodynamic for faster swing speeds, right? It was produced for power in the back to be able to maintain the mid and rear court, right? Um, what other rack? It's 100ZZ, of course, right? That was, you know, for relentless attack. I think that's the actual marketing term they use. But if you like, even just look at it, it's a compact head with a solid core, something we have never really seen in the badminton industry, right? And what did those things help you produce? It helped give you a punch um, that was like quick and maneuverable because of the compact hit and the solid core just let you have power and like it just flex in a way that just like let you do it over and over again with very minimal downtime between each attacking shot, right? The 1000Z, right? Repulsion, above everything. Just pace on pace on pace, right? It was good at um, one thing, well, uh, technically, you know, it's pretty solid all, all over, but it like it was desired and it, it was ab cut above the rest because of its repulsion, right? And you can see it from its speed assist bumper, right? From the way it uses the materials of the Torre and the M40X and whatever, I don't remember, right? But like, you guys, you guys understand what I'm saying, right? Every racket, um, every good racket, let's say, as I've argued, um, has a very defined market and intended user even outside of you it's like you know like the most popular most famous other branded rackets victor brave sword right good for, for good for speed and was a very good um you could call it a grandfather for like aerodynamic frames um and fast rackets even to the modern day of badminton um, I don't really know that many outside of Yonex rackets, so that's probably my only example. But you guys understand what I'm saying. The 800 Pro, I really struggled to put it in a category because, like, it's honestly my first, like, my first opinion picking this up, right? It felt like an inferior 1000Z, right? It felt like they were trying to mimic the repulsion that you get from the 1000Z, but they couldn't use the speed assist bumper because then there would be not enough product differentiation between this and the 1000Z, right? Um, the wide frame, again, something from the Nanoflare 700 and the 1000Z, right? Um, like, it felt like they had to create like something to give it enough differentiation, but like, if you picked up the two, like I feel like a lot of people gravitate towards the 1000Z. Like copper in in the T or near here, like that was like a design decision from like left field in my opinion. I, I don't understand what was the point of it. Um, so the verdict is, I guess, honestly I would pass on this racket, right? A lot of people, a lot of the fans of the Android Pro that I've interviewed online um, they claim that they prefer the 800 Pro simply because it's a more easier to use racket. It's more consistent and it's easier for them to use. But they said on their good days, they would perform better on the 1000Z. Um, which I guess is a fair choice to, to make, I guess. If this review feels all over the place, it's because it, this is just truly a hard racket to review. It's just something you have to pick up and try for yourselves if you really want to, right? I think for most people, they will enjoy the 1000Z. The appeal of the 1000Z is very understandable, right? You pick it up and because it's the most repulsive frame on the racket, on the on the market by like a far margin, you un you immediately understand the appeal. It feels like you pick it up and you get like plus ten on your speed on uh, and on your repulsion. You feel like you feel like truly a doubles player, right? You feel like shit. Like everything just works. Everything clicks. Like my attacks in the front are better. My drops are faster, right? Like my my drives, my pushes. Like everything feels more flat and fast. It's a fun racket, and it's a good high performance racket to use. Like the appeal on it is very easy. It cannot be overstated. Um, the appeal and the design for it, right? 800 Pro. It serves like a very niche market. I think it's going to be very polarizing, just like the 88S Pro was, because of its unique stringing pattern, because of its, let's say, unique feel, right? And because of its very niche and um, somewhat, I guess, isolated intended user. So, yeah, I hope this was helpful, right? 
this was a very hard racket to review. I've said this, I think, a billion times now, but I hope that this was helpful. Even with the script, I feel like this rack or this review was very just all over the place. So I like, please forgive me if this does not come across well. If you have any questions or concerns about this racket, feel free to drop any any questions in the comments below, and I will do my best to answer them. Um, but yeah, like and subscribe.